Have you ever had a Kevlar shock cord break on you? In this video, I'm going to cover some techniques to try to prevent that from happening. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'd like to talk about shock cords and how to prevent them from breaking. The reason they break is because there's so much force on them that it just exceeds the strength of the cord itself. Now Kevlar is really strong, so if you're breaking Kevlar, you probably need thicker Kevlar. But there is some techniques you can use to lessen the chances of shock cord breaking. Here I have a Sky Torpedo and I have a pretty long shock cord. And the longer the shock cord, the better. So that's one thing you can do is make your shock cord longer. But if the shock cord is already in the rocket and you can't replace it, here are some techniques you can do. The first thing that we're gonna do, and I think I've shown this before, is called a daisy chain, where basically you take the shock cord you make a loop and you come under, pull out the shock cord like that, and then you keep pulling it out from under. And I did a specific video on how to do this. So what I'm showing here is kind of a fast way. I and mean, what it does is it creates a chain of loops. And then when the nose cone comes off and it stretches out, it'll just pull these loops apart. And the mere fact that they're looped together like that and the loops have to pull out, there's a little bit of friction in there. And that little bit of friction slows things down and puts less stress on your shock cord. Now, if you don't know how to do daisy chaining, another alternative is masking tape, where you can take a piece of masking tape. And this is probably better, particularly for higher power rockets. So what we want to do is we want to zigzag fold the shock cord like this and then just take a piece of tape and wrap it around the cord and we want to do this several times along the length of the cord um, you'll do the entire length so you'll just do a zigzag fold back and forth back and forth like that and then take your tape and wrap it around like that so now what has to happen when the nose cone comes off it has to rip the tape and the mere fact that you have to tear tape takes energy and that energy again is going to slow things down and put less stress on the shock cord so that's a really quick way to do it now i've seen other people instead of using masking tape using small rubber bands basically it's the same thing you know you go back and forth you know zigzag fold and then you take a rubber band and you put the rubber band over the top of it and just you know twist it up a couple of times so that the rubber band stays on and take a rubber band you can take a you know a small one or a big one it doesn't really matter you know once you put it on give it a twist put it on when i was a kid i had a paper route and we had to roll the papers and put a rubber band on it so i got really fast on twisting putting rubber bands on things so again, you're going to do the entire shock cord that way. And then, you know, as the rocket goes up and the nose cone comes off, it's going to pull that rubber band off. And then it's going to pull the next one off. And the fact that it has to take time to do that slows things down and puts less stress on the shock cord. And that's to prevent it, you know, from snapping. Now to prevent a zipper, that's what I have here. This is called a zipper shield. And I think I've done a video on this one as well. This right here is a small zipper that I had already repaired. But what the zipper shield does is it spreads the force out over a wider area so that when the shock cord comes around the tip of the tube, it spreads the force out and there's less of a chance of it zippering. I really like these things. So for mid-power rockets, like you see here, I highly recommend them. I've been flying them on everything since we've invented these things earlier this year. So get your zipper shield, get some rubber bands or some masking tape, or learn how to do a daisy chain to prevent your shock cord from breaking. So my name again is Tim Van Milligan. You've been watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.